Hey, welcome back to all of our options traders. And I have to apologize. It's been a little bit of a slow start here for 2023, trying to get these videos out. I've got a lot going on, but I'm definitely still going to try and get them out to you. But as always, suggestions are highly appreciated. Let me know the topics that you want to hear. And one that somebody suggested is about managing a losing trade. This is one that we get a lot. Obviously, it's something that happens a lot and people want to know how they can manage their way out of it. And what this really falls under an umbrella that is called position adjustment. How can I make adjustments, whether it's buying something else or selling against it, to try to work my way out of this losing trade? So if those are topics that you want to hear, I will certainly do some of those in the future. But for right now, what I wanted to do is to just talk about it on a much bigger level and why this is really a bad perspective to approach the markets from. So let's go find out why. As always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Very much appreciated and definitely helps to promote the channel. So what's the proper perspective? Remember that losing trades are part of the game. It's just a missed shot. It's an incomplete pass. You don't see professional athletes get worked up when that happens. It is expected. It's part of the game. And also remember that the only way that you win is if another trader loses. I think a lot of times traders forget that. They think there's just this pile of money up there in the sky and everybody gets to reach up into this tree and just grab money. Well, it's not. It's not working up and down. It's working left to right or horizontally. It's coming from another trader. And so understand that the markets are loaded with good traders and investors. If they weren't, they're going to get washed out. So even if you do have some really bad traders out there, and I'm sure we get them every single year, there's always a new batch, they're not going to survive very long. But the ones that survive, you've got to give them some respect. They're there for a reason. And so you can't expect to always be on the winning side. Now also, as I've talked about before, even if you win 30% of your trades, you can still make a very good living doing that. It's more about the expected values than it is your win-loss ratio. So just understand that they're not always going to be winning trades. That's going to help you to really handle the psychology of losing trades. Now, another thing to understand about escaping a loser is that each trade stands on its own. Trading out of a losing trade is really asking for a crystal ball. You're saying, how can I turn this losing trade into a winner? Well, if that call option, let's say, has now fallen out of the money, it's got an even smaller chance of becoming in the money. How do you want me or anybody else to say, oh, here's the way that it's now going to greatly improve your odds of having it become in the money? So if you can escape a losing trade, you wouldn't have let it turn into a loser in the first place. So see, that's kind of the irony about it when people say, oh, I've got this losing trade. What do I need to do now? Well, if you had that answer, you would have had that answer on the first trade. It all gets back to that previous screen of saying that some of these are going to turn out to be losers. So there really is no such thing as escaping a losing trade. You can't just hit the magic button that says, oh, we're going to just hit hyperspace and forget that this ever happened. We're going to replenish your money and let you start over. And yet that's really what traders are looking for. Every single trade stands on its own. You can do a second trade that might make money and you might not. But too many times people look at it as though it's got to be part of this first trade. And I have to do some type of adjustment to this first trade to somehow turn it into a winner or mitigate the losses. Well, is that necessarily your best move? What you really should be looking for is what's the best move given the current market conditions? Might not have anything to do with that position. You might be better off writing it off or just closing it out as a loss. Those are going to happen. But all too often, traders just don't want to take that route. And that's usually what causes the problems. So before I do some of these future videos showing about trade adjustments, let me give you a few pointers here that will help you to keep a better perspective about managing risk. First one is, remember, don't invest more than you can lose. Keep your trade sizes relatively small. Remember, too, that options have leverage. You don't need a real large position to make it turn out to be a big winner. And also, if you are willing to buy $10,000 worth of stock, you don't buy $10,000 worth of options. 
that's a really dangerous use of leverage. Instead, realize that if you have to pay $100 per share for stock, and you can now get it for $10 with the option, that is more than enough leverage. And another thing to remember is to spread the risk. Go back to the basic diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put it all in one stock or one strategy, no matter how good it might look. Because remember, if you were that good, you wouldn't be asking about how do I manage a losing position. They happen. They happen for all kinds of reasons, reasons you never would have thought of. Spread it around. Don't ever invest more than you can lose on that position. Second one that I've talked about before, scale into positions. So this just simply means buy smaller lots over time. If you're willing to buy 10 call options, don't buy all 10 up front. People want to do that, though, because they're saying, I'm so convinced this is the bottom. i got to pile it all in. Bad idea. Take a bigger perspective and say, yeah, it might look like a good time, but I could also be wrong. Maybe I could take five trades of two contracts and still end up with 10 contracts, but I'm going to buy them over time. This way, it allows me to play the volatility. Remember that volatility is the risk. If you're ending up with a losing position, it's because of the volatility. And this is a very powerful way to handle it. Also remember that you don't need to buy the identical option. So if you're buying the July 50 calls, just like Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street, nobody says that on the second lot, you have to buy the July 50s. Maybe you could buy the August 50s. Maybe it's fallen a little bit. You could buy the August 45s. You just want to look at it as an investment in that stock. But traders often feel that it's about reducing their cost basis in that one option, so they have to keep piling the money in that same expiration and strike. It's a bad perspective. It's an investment in the underlying stock. Don't worry so much about which expiration and strike. Just add money over time, and it doesn't have to be in the identical option. And this gives you another added layer of diversification. It also allows you to play volatility as well. You're capturing an average volatility over time instead of in just that month that you initially bought. Another one, use in the money options. We've talked about this many times. Remember that options have direction, magnitude, and speed. If you're trading shares of stock, it's just about direction up and down. That's not true for options. So if you're in doubt about how quickly the stock will move, use in the money options. So for instance, if the stock is trading for 100, maybe we see the $90 call is trading for $10.50 with a break even of $100.50. That's just adding the 90 strike to the 1050 premium. And maybe at the same time the 110 call is trading for 50 cents with a break even of 11050. There's a very big difference in those two break evens. For the $90 call, you need the stock to move up a half a percent. For the 110 call, it's got to move up 10.5%. So if these are 30-day options, think about that. Most stocks don't move 10% in a year. You're asking for it to move 10.5% in 30 days just to break even. Chances are it's going to end up being a losing trade. But then traders will look at the 90 call and say, ah, it's $10.50. That's so much instead of 50 cents. Well, yes, that's true, but also remember that you're controlling the stock for $10.50. It's a $100 stock. You're paying roughly one-tenth the price. That's plenty of leverage. Don't try to make something that is super great even better by going to something far out of the money that has virtually no chance of winning. Another little tip, remember to allow time to work. The key advantage of a call option is the downside protection. So allow time for your outlook to work. I've seen so many times where traders buy this call option for $10.50, and now it's trading for 10, and they say, oh, I've got to get out to really mitigate my losses. I got to manage that downside. Well, that's your insurance policy coming to the rescue. It's one of the reasons that you buy a call in the first place. So give yourself time to be correct. Because if you don't, what you're really saying is, not only do I think the stock is going up, but I think it's going up tomorrow. And that is a really difficult game, almost guaranteed to be a loser. And that's what's going to make you say, hey, 
How do I manage my way out of a losing trade? So keep these points in mind for starters for the year. And in the next few videos and through the year, I'll talk about trade adjustments. And what trade adjustments are, given the right conditions, are there ways that we can alter this strategy to put us into a different position? None of them are ways for guaranteeing to get your money back, but they are ways to put yourself into a different set of risks and rewards now that we've seen how the market has changed. And so those will be some fun things to look forward to for the year. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.